Good morning, my beautiful friends. What's up? My name is Ronan, and this podcast today is a little different to what you're used to. I want to help you. I want to help you speak English. I want to help you speak fluently. I want you to understand real English, like the hesitations that people have. I want you to understand the self-corrections that people use. I want you to understand unfinished ideas in English because these are all features of the English language that you don't really get in regular, like, TV shows. You don't get them in, say, language textbooks or something or formal lessons. And that's kind of the aim of this podcast and the aim of what I'm up to right now. Now... There is something I would like to introduce you to. I would like to introduce you to the chats. The chats. What are the chats? I'm glad you asked. Well, first of all, the chats is just a word. And it's a word that is a slang term in Ireland, which means just conversation or something. So it's kind of like, oh, I called my sister for the chats. I called my brother for the chats. Here, call over. We'll have the chats and some tea. We'll have the chats. <clears throat> and the chats is exactly that. You sit down, you meet, and you talk. And the reason I'm telling you about it is because every two weeks, I get together with some English learners, and we have the chats. And we talk about a whole bunch of different topics. We meet every other Thursday, so twice a month, We have a topic that we may look into in advance. We don't have to. It's not necessary. And when we get together on Zoom, we just have the chats about that topic. But like all great conversations and like all chats, the conversation meanders to random topics. We could start talking about wildfires. Then we could talk about space travel. We could talk about aliens. And then we'd somehow figure our way back to wildfires in the end. The beauty of conversation is what the chats is all about. The natural, unplanned conversations, the nuances of the language, and the really, like, presenting ideas without thinking, without hesitation. That's everything that we strive for in the chats. So, like, the chats are an informal or or semi-formal, we might say, type of English class where the main aim is to help you understand high-end, complex English and to speak English naturally and fluently. That is the main aim of it, to train your ear to capture the nuances of the language. And it does not include formal BS grammar lessons or shit like that or exams and stuff, but rather it's like a way that I facilitate your learning through the chats, and so much more. So through the chats, the premium social medias, through the content on my website, like the private materials that only members get to see, I really believe I can help people achieve the very, very best and top level of English that they strive for. But most of all, what I know I'm absolutely amazing at is getting people to express themselves and not be afraid of fucking up in English. That is something that I have a very good talent for. And I am being cocky. I'm boasting here. But I'm doing it because I really believe in this. So this podcast episode is all based on the chats. All right, the chats. And in the next session, we are going to be talking about a TED Talk. And this podcast, the aim of this podcast right now is to just build up some general information about that TED Talk to help you understand a little more about it and maybe get motivated to watch it and get motivated to read about it and study about it. Now, remember, there is a workbook for this podcast, so please download the workbook. You can find the workbook in the description. There's a link. Hit that. Download it. And just take a look at the workbook. Watch the TED Talk. And if you want, come along to the chats. Would love to see you there. So overall, folks, the uh, layer, the format of this podcast is going to be as follows. First of all, 
I am going to just have some background information and we'll go through a process called analyzing. And that's where we analyze the title of the TED Talk and we analyze some keywords from the TED Talk or what we might expect to see. Then I have some research questions and some critical thinking questions for you, all related to the topic of why rivers and lakes should have the same rights as humans. Following that, I just talk about some examples of man-made ecological issues, some natural ecological issues, and what we might be able to do about it. But uh, yeah, at the very end, I just talk about the reflection sheet, but of course, everything is in the workbook. Your job right now should just be to sit back, relax, and listen to the podcast, and use it as a guide to facilitate your learning. Like I said, I would love to see you at the Thursday chats or at the chats, as we say. And uh, all the info is in the description. So without any further ado, sit back, relax, grab a joint, grab a coffee, grab an ice cream, grab a water. If you have a hair, grab that because I'm jealous. No, I'm not really. Couldn't care less. Anyways, enjoy. Okay, so one of the first things that you can do as a learner to understand an educational topic, like this is not for relaxation, this is not for uh, watching a movie, this is purely for learning. But one of the first things you can do will be analyze the title and think of English you might hear in this TED Talk. So the title is Why... Rivers and lakes should have the same rights as humans. And once we start to analyse the title, we can get a better understanding of the entire TED Talk. Now, we can assume that this TED Talk is on the topic of ecology, nature, probably something to do with conservation of nature, because it is talking about giving rivers and lakes the same rights as humans. So what rights do humans have? Hundreds of thousands of rights. What rights do rivers and lakes have? Not nearly as many. But if the topic is about rivers and lakes, can you think of the name of some rivers and lakes in your hometown or where you're living right now? Are they big? Are they small? Can you swim in them or not? Are you able to dip a glass into the water and chug it? Chug, C-H-U-G. Chug is when you drink quickly. So would you feel comfortable drinking the water that either flows through your hometown or is in a lake? Now, I live in Kelowna, British Columbia, in Canada. And I live on Lake Okanagan. And there is not a hope in hell I would drink that water. It is probably filthy. It's a huge lake, but there is a lot of marine traffic, like a lot of boats. There's uh, airplanes that land in it. And then God knows where all the sewage from town, because a lot of rivers flow into the lake. A lot of rivers will flow from the highest mountains all the way down through residential areas into the lake. And who knows what happens upstream that eventually finds its way into Lake Okanagan. So, If, if rivers and lakes had the same rights as humans, I can imagine a lot of changes in the town that I live in. I can imagine they, as in like the government or whoever's in charge, would have to, say, invest a lot of money to protect the rivers and lakes, find out ways to preserve it, and really analyze the best maintenance method for these rivers and lakes. They would also really have to think about how to prevent people from screwing with it, which would be a lot more difficult. And so this TED Talk is all about why rivers and lakes should have the same rights as humans. So can you think of any issues that rivers or lakes have now? Can you think of any man-made are natural issues that rivers and lakes have today. Is damage caused by individuals or is damage caused by 
collective groups, like organisations or cities, for instance. So really try to dissect and analyse the title of the TED Talk before you actually watch it. Remember, we're just trying to learn a little bit. Then, uh, the next step after that, you should really try to think about the vocabulary you're going to hear. All right? So this TED Talk is about rivers and lakes. So we're probably going to hear about flow, about water. It is about why rivers and lakes should have the same rights as humans. So in my head, I just try to think of different words that might come up. River, meander, lake, pollution, contamination, habitat, history, tradition, fishing, penalty, cover up, run off. And there's so many more words that you could think about. But this is a process that you can spend five minutes on or or you could spend five hours on. It's entirely up to you. But just analyse the title and try to think of some words connected to the overall topic. Now the next thing, the next thing I always encourage people to do is research. Research, research, research. And I encourage you to research the absolute hell out of the TED Talk, the topic, anything connected to it. The more time you spend researching, the better and easier the TED Talk will be to listen to and to comprehend fully. So I know the speaker, her name is Kelsey Leonard. Research her. Who is she? Where is she from? Why is she interested in this? The more research you do, the more you learn. It's very, very simple. And this is not learning by watching a TED Talk. This is so much more, you see. Because once you take the research aspect into your own hands, you're really becoming an independent learner. And you'll soon find out that you can turn anything into a very valuable English lesson. So I'd encourage you to research the heck out of this TED Talk. Research the heck out of the topic overall. Challenge yourself to do it all in English as well. That means you'll have to find English websites. It could be news websites, government websites, um, not-for-profits, for example. They probably have a whole bunch of things about water contamination and ecology. But I do have some questions for you. I do have some questions that might guide you. And these questions are all available in the workbook. So don't forget to download that workbook, okay? Because these questions will help guide your research. Question number one. What are some causes of water pollution or contamination? And for this one, try to think of some natural ones and try to think of some man-made ones. Question two. What are some problems of water pollution and contamination, so kind of like cause and effect. Number three, is water pollution or contamination an issue where you live? Four, how can we prevent water pollution or contamination? Five, the aim of this TED Talk is to explain why rivers and lakes should have the same rights as humans. What would happen if rivers and lakes had the same rights as humans? Question six, water pollution and contamination take many different forms. What are some pollutants or contaminants in water? Seven, what is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Now, that one is crazy. It's in the ocean, but still very relevant for the topic. And uh, just to see what work is being done about it, perhaps. So the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's disgusting. Number eight. What are some organizations or charities that focus on ecological issues? Nine. Who are the creators of some big ecological issues in your country? So that's a big one, folks. That's a pretty big one. Because you need to find out who is responsible for water contamination or pollution where you live. What is being done about it if anything has been done about it what could be done about it question number 10 what are some of the biggest ecological issues in your country's history 11 
do you think fines are enough to prevent ecological issue, like fines or penalties for corporations? 12. If you were president of the world, of your country or whatever, what would you do to prevent ecological issues? And this one will get you thinking, what are some knock-on effects of ecological issues? So what are some knock-on effects of issues? And what I mean by that is, uh, for instance, wildfire. <clears throat> wildfire is an ecological issue. It happens every year where I live. And the knock-on effects, obviously fire. Well, that's a direct effect, I guess. Death. Loss of habitat. Wildlife displacement. Loss of money. Insurance rates going up for everybody. Respiratory issues. These are different knock-on effects. Not a direct result of the wildfires, but they happen because of it. There are many knock-on effects. What are some knock-on effects of logging, of flood, of famine, for example? All of these. So, the idea of those questions, some of those you could research, some of those you could just think about. But if you can try to form answers for some of those, you're really getting a good general idea and a general understanding of the topic that will be discussed in the TED Talk. So I do recommend spending some time thinking about that. So it actually got me thinking a lot about um, examples. You know, like what are some say, natural, and what are some man-made ecological issues? Because there's, there's a huge amount of both. And I have a list, actually, of just some examples, I guess. And uh, one that came up was uh, just uh, volcanic activity. That is, that is a natural disaster. That is an ecological issue. And volcanic eruptions can release chemicals, heavy metals, and ash into water bodies, leading to contamination. Volcanic ash can also affect water quality by altering pH levels and clogging filtration systems. So there was an interest in natural ecological issue directly connected to water. Another one could be an algae bloom. Algae bloom. A-L-G-A-L. Algae is how you pronounce it. And algae bloom uh, happens in the water. When there's a warm temperature, sunlight, and lots of nutrients in the water, it can uh, trigger an algae bloom. An algae bloom is like a thin layer of uh, vegetation or something over the water. And as a result, there's a lack of oxygen in the water, which is incredibly dangerous for life in the water, like plants and fish. So they were some examples of natural ecological issues. But then I got looking into and thinking about some man-made uh, ecological issues. And, you know, it could be agricultural runoff. Agricultural runoff. This one happens in Ireland more often because there's a lot of farms in the middle of nowhere and they use fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides. And if not done correctly, uh, if it rains or if there's water, those chemicals can flow with the water <clears throat> away from everything and into the water supply or into the water cycle as we call it so that is a huge issue agricultural run off and that could also include say uh, manure you know from cattle or something like that it can be a huge issue issue uh, wastewater disposal can be an issue so uh, that is where people do not correctly dispose of domestic wastewater, like water from your toilet, your shower, your sink, all of those. That is a man-made issue that happens a lot because that water can include many other things. It has a lot of chemicals in it. You add chemicals in terms of shampoo, in terms of pharmaceuticals, household chemicals like bleach will be poured down the sink or something. So all of those can contaminate water and they're man-made ecological issues. Oil spills, very common, unfortunately, but we often see it out in the ocean. Uh, if an oil rig has an accident, which I'll talk about in a moment, if there is a issue in terms of an oil tanker running aground and suddenly the side is cut open and oil starts spilling everywhere, those are terrible. 
mining activities. Huge problem in Canada. Massive problem here where they mine and mine and mine. And as a result, pollutants enter the water supply. So there's many, many, many ways that these ecological issues are created by man. There's many, many ways that these ecological issues are created naturally. And that's what we're going to learn more about in this TED Talk, why rivers and lakes should have the same rights as humans. Because just looking at those very basic uh, examples of how water can get uh, contaminated or polluted, it would be a huge undertaking to try and ensure, to ensure that the rivers and lakes do indeed have the same rights as humans. So once you do all of that, once you do the research, you think about the words, then you actually watch the TED Talk, of course. And uh, that's where you sit down, you watch it a couple of times, as much as you want, before the chats, preferably. So that would be the whole aim is that you watch it and then you come to the chats and we can talk about it, for example. And uh, this is when you complete the pages in the workbook, especially the reflection page. So I would love for you to try and identify something that surprised you in the TED Talk. If you can identify something that surprised you related to anything, not just this TED Talk, you're going to get a greater understanding of it. For instance, I recently watched a TED Talk about wildfires. And one thing that surprised me was that on the mountains... It's not actually good if it's completely covered in trees. There should be patches. And that means that there should be areas where there's no trees because that's how they naturally grow. However, because man has interfered, a lot of our mountains are just covered in trees. And it blew my mind that that is not actually good. That is not healthy for the forest and thus it can be bad. Now, once I was able to identify something that surprised me, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that one. And I've spoken to some people that also watch the TED Talk and they say the same thing. It's something that you didn't know beforehand, but now you do. So it's kind of just for your own sake. But if you can watch something and identify a scene or or a statistic that surprised you, you're going to be more interested. So do that. The next thing you should try to identify are key takeaways, key takeaways. And a key takeaway is like a message from the TED Talk. So what is the purpose of the TED Talk? Is it to sell something? Is it to advertise something? Or is it to give you a message? Is it to turn you into a rebel, to turn you into an advocate? Is it just to entertain by telling us an inspirational story? So what do you think Kelsey Leonard wants from you after watching this TED Talk. What is the key takeaway? What is something you learned? What is something you picked up on? You should always, and I mean always try, to connect the TED Talk to your own life. This to me is by far the greatest thing that you can do. Language connected to your life. Once you can connect it to your life, you can really and truly learn. So that means that you watch this TED Talk and you try to figure out how it could impact you. Now this one is about rivers and lakes having the same rights as humans. I guarantee you if that happened, I would actually be affected because all the oil and gas companies would probably have to pay a lot more money, which means my gas would go up. Perhaps. I try to think about places in my home country that could benefit from something like this. For instance, there's a river in Ireland called the Shannon. It's the longest river in the country. It flows up and down, or not up and down, but it flows right down the country. Recently, the government have decided to divert part of that water to Dublin, and it's going to be used to cool servers and for industrial use so they're going to the middle of the country and diverting part of the river to flow somewhere else completely for commercial purposes that is definitely 
not treating a river like it has the same rights as a human, right? That is something that would have a direct impact on Ireland if it were to be introduced, if it were to be brought forward. And so I can really think about this TED Talk in terms of my home country and how they would have to make some changes. I can think about the rivers or lakes that I went to as a kid and how by them having the same rights as humans, they could be a lot better. Or would they be more restrictive? There's many ways to look at it. There's two sides to every coin. So try to think about areas in your country and think about what would Kelsey Leonard, the speaker, do about it or say about it, for instance. One of the last things you should do would be to write down some questions. Questions for the speaker or questions about something that you're interested in based on the TED Talk. Something that you want to know more about. Perhaps the speaker says something that uh, raises your eyebrow. Well, what was it? And what's a question you could ask them to get an answer? If you were sitting opposite Kelsey in a bar or a coffee shop, what questions would you ask her? I mean, for me, when did you get interested in ecology and the protection of water? Have you ever witnessed an ecological issue in person? What are some barriers to your success and dream of rivers and lakes having the same rights as humans? But if you can think of some questions for Kelsey, for the speaker, if you can think of some questions connected to it, because I'll give you a little bit, I'll tell you something that happens in a TED Talk. She describes how there are already some rivers and lakes in the world that do have the same rights as humans. And for me, I'd like to know who organized that. Who spearheaded that campaign to spearhead? There's a good verb. Write that down. Spearhead. But who spearheaded that campaign? They're the questions I would ask the speaker. They're the questions I would ask about the past, the present, or the future. So what else? What else? What else? All right. Um, some key words. You know, some key words that do come up. Corporations comes up a lot in this one. A corporation is a giant company. There's one or two words I do really want to talk about. And uh, it's legal personhood. Legal personhood is a key term from this TED Talk. And, uh, you know, in the workbook, there's a list of words. And there's a list of links to bring you to a tutorial or to a video to learn about those words. So make sure to download the workbook for this tutorial for this podcast, for the chats. Okay, well, I think that's it, folks. I don't think I have much more else to say right now. I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. My name is Ronan, and you already know that. My name is Ronan, and I host these language classes. I don't want to call it a class. I hope like a language, I host a language hangout every other Thursday. The next one we're talking about this TED Talk, but we could talk about something else. Could be a song, could be music, could be a news article. One week we spoke about killer whales and how they're learning and attacking boats in Europe. It's a really interesting time. I absolutely love it. If it's something you're interested in, there's a link down there that you should hit and you should join us. It is a lot of fun, but it's also something I believe in and I'm not going to try pedal something I think is bullshit. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you want to join. Let me know if you think it's stupid or something. I'm open to all feedback. But anyways, let's wrap this bitch up. My name is Ronan. This is Little Seal English. Thank you so much for listening to this random podcast about ecological issues. Just trying to get you to think about ecological issues and shit like that. And like I said, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.